Praise be to God. We had a wonderful time in the presence of God. Welcome to our congregation. We always welcome you and welcome to those who are online. If you are just tuning in, we are Ponte Ealing Church. Thank you, thank you so much for taking the time to open the scripture with us. Yes, that's what I said it right. When you tune in to us right now, we just go straight into the word of God. I hope that you're doing okay. This is the last Sunday of the year. We're about to cross into a new year in just a few hours. And I believe that the word I have today is like a wrap up of the word that was given uh, in January 2023 at the beginning. The word that was given uh, uh, last year, going into December and January of, uh, of uh, the, this year, it was the word grace. So when I was given that word throughout the whole year, I didn't know what kind of grace I was going to need it. We went through a long series where we just looked at grace. We said, we're going to just poke it at this. It's mega. There's a lot of things. And we found that there was very many layers of grace. There was different type of grace. There was grace to move on. There was, there was grace for strength. There was grace for this, the grace for that, the uh, grace for healing, grace for forgiveness, some people struggling with, you know, unforgiveness, all sorts of grace. And I will take you to that scripture again, because I believe as I was praying again for, oh Lord, we are coming to the end of the year. I am so, so conscious that throughout the whole year, my goodness, I did not see certain things coming. I don't know about you at home, but for me and my family, it has been challenging. For our church, it has been challenging at times, you know, things happen throughout the whole year. I, I'm sure if you're normal somehow, you've not had a steady, like, too steady, steady year. I'm pretty sure you've had peak, you've had lows. How you've dealt with it, I don't know, but how we've dealt with it, we've clinged on to, we've been clinging on to the grace of God each year. Each month we were saying, it's a new month, give us a new grace for this month. It's a new week, give us a new grace for this way because the scripture says uh, that the God in whom we trust is the God of all grace so basically if you put a bad English you should say it's the God of all graces so he has many types of graces and as we reach the end of the year I was just reflecting of how his word was true I needed grace for each month, a different type of grace, and I've, I've been clinging on to that, and I'm sure you have as well. And now we're reaching the end. I begin to look at next year. We are almost there, 2024. By the grace of God, after midnight today, we'll still be alive. You know, some people, they will be denied. Even it will be 1123, 1155. Some people will be denied entry into the new year because it is reported that every second that passes that someone dies someone crosses into the next world just like every second passes there's a newborn and so for us we are going to believe that it will give us grace to breathe in the new year and as i look to the new year i begin to hear this word again say grace you don't just need grace now you need promotion of grace you need grace and glory you need the grace and glory of God. And we're going to read through the scripture. I will show you what I mean by that because it's very new. It's a fresh word for me. It's like the word that was given and God just breathed it on it again and given me a new way of seeing it, a new perspective on it. And so it's opening up a realm where he say, you want our let not just grace. This year that is coming, I've had the word saying that there will be things happening in the year. There will be a lot of, uh, um, what was what was the, the word, the, the, there will be a lot of darkness going on around but you will need not just to cover from grace you will also need to be walking under the glory of god to have such a protection because this coming year the lawlessness will be multiplied if you heard about lawlessness where people are doing whatever seems right in their own eyes and i felt in my spirit that this coming year the lawlessness spirit will be multiplied and so because of that, you have to picture our God is a holy God. Every time you read in the scripture that lawlessness multiplied, even if it was his own children, Israel, what did God do? He turned his back. 
So the more the lawlessness multiply, the more we are far and far away from God's grace and mercy and protection. And that's when things happen, natural destruction, just like that. There's a flood, just like that. There's a there's an earth shake, just like that. Disasters happening, and the world is wondering, why is this happening? This is a good God, he's a good God, but he's a just God. There's a lot of evilness going on. You think he's just going to stare at it? He turns and looks away. And so for us who are in Christ, we want to be under the glory of God. And we look at the scripture, and you'll understand, I am still studying this, because it's very fresh, so bear with me if it seems a bit like, you know, because it's not quite, I am still kind of like, really? In fact, I just want to open to Isaiah 60. Isaiah 61, I read it this very moment, so I prepared the message, I thought I had prepared the message, okay? I think I understand where I'm going, but I want to read you Isaiah 60, then I'll pray for the word, and then we'll, we'll go deeper. Isaiah 60. Um, I read from the New King James Version, Isaiah 60, from 1 to 2, it says, Arise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and the deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. I felt like, whoa, I read it this morning and I say, thank you, Holy Spirit. This is a revelation while I was trying to figure out grace, glory. Really, what in the world is that? Walking under the realm of glory, what is that? And this morning I just read Isaiah 60 and I felt like, pfft, that's a word right there, confirming that darkness will be over the earth. But yes, it will be over the earth. As long as we are living under the earth, we will see that as well. It's like when COVID happened. There wasn't just COVID in the house of unbelievers. COVID was everywhere. Believer, unbeliever, children, old, young people. It was everywhere. So darkness, when it covers the earth, it will cover the earth. But we want to learn, Lord, how we can really actually Actually, uh, have this word resonate in our life, manifest in our lives where darkness is over the earth, but your glory shines over us. So in the darkness, somehow your glory protects us. Somehow your glory gives us that shield we've been singing about in the worship. Yeah, allow me to pray. Father, I thank you. You are a good, good God. Yes. I thank you for the breath of life you've given to me. I thank you for the breath of life you've given to my friend watching online. I thank you for the breath of life you've given to my friend here presently in this church, in this building. Thank you, Spirit of the living God, for life. You are the giver of life. Right now, I just commit this time, this short time, where I'm just trying to figure out this word you've given me. I'm just trying to understand it. Lord, I pray for understanding. I pray for the spirit of revelation. I pray that you will open up our mind. You will, you will increase our knowledge. You will increase our understanding of your word. It will not be like we're singing in a foreign language. Lord. It will not be like we're reading a foreign language and foreign letters. We pray that you will open up our eyes, open up our understanding to actually get what you're saying to us. In the name of Jesus, I ask you as I always do, Spirit of God, breathe on this word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. So now let's go to the scripture. We're going to begin by looking at um, Psalm 84. Those who have their Bible, please turn with me to Psalm 84. We look at Psalm 84, we'll read verse 11 to 12. I'm going to read first from the New King James Version, and then I want to read the same verse. I want to read it in an amplified Bible version because I want to understand that there's a difference between grace and glory, and I will explain that if we needed grace throughout the year, and now he wants us not just to have the grace of God in our life, but he wants us to move into a glory realm for a reason. I don't know how he's going to show us and give 
give us a map how to get there. So let's read, first of all, his promise in the scripture, Psalm 84, 11 to 12. It says, for the Lord God is a sun and shield, protection, sun and shield. The Lord will give you grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, verse 12, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Remember what I said before we started recording, sometimes worship is a type of warfare when you're yada. I mean, you go back to some of the, you say, click playlist, find the, the message where we talked about pray, we worship, yada, look at that message and you will see what I mean because I'm not going into that. It's there, it says verse 12, O Lord of hosts, is the Lord of the, the heaven's army. In some translation, instead of saying Lord of hosts, it says Lord of heaven's army. So when he's coming, fighting for you, you praise him, he fights for you. Now let's read the same passage in the, the um, Amplifier version. Mind if you have the NIV where it says grace and glory, some people will have favor and honor. We like that, isn't it? When you say, the grace is upon my life, the favor of the Lord, I am favored, you know. Like, the favor of the Lord is upon my life. We like that word. But today, he wants to take us a bit further. So, when you have grace and glory, some version says favor and honor. But we want to go to the Amplified Bible version because it amplified what that grace and glory means. It says, Psalm 84 still, verse 11 to 12, I read the Amplified Bible classic version. It says, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows, present grace and favor and future glory, honor, splendor, and heavenly bliss. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. And verse 12, it says, Oh, Lord of us, blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the man who trusts in you, leaning and believing on you, committing all and confidently looking to you and that without fear or misgiving. Praise the Lord. This is a promise that we want to cling on to, that the word he has given us this promise. He promises grace and glory we want to look at that now let's go back to the very beginning of the message when we had that word grace and we looked at it it's good that we go into the scripture we look at different scriptures saying what god is saying to us for us to understand where he's calling us in the new year how we walk in that realm of glory how we walk not just covered by grace but we also under the the, the glory realm so first peter that was our key verse for the series that we had the grace the grace series the grace that was online if you want to go back and revisit it you know many people are having time off work why not just pick up some of our playlists and look at the old series and open the scripture again every time we mention that study the word of god first peter 5 10 to 11 that was our key verse. I want to read it again from the New King James Version and the Amplifier. We're not bored of the Word of God. For we get knowledge and we get revelation and we get strength from the Word of God. So I will not apologize. We've got a few verses there. But we will understand when I start bringing examples. First Peter 5, 10 to 11, New King James Version. It says, But may the God of all grace... Who calls us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while. Perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. And now let's turn to the Amplified Bible Version Classic of the same verses. First Peter chapter 5 verse 10 to 11. I read, it says, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace will impart. <laughs> 
blessings and favor who has called you to his own eternal glory in Christ Jesus will himself complete and make you what you ought to be establish and ground you securely and strengthen and settle you to him be dominion power authority rule forever and ever amen so before we start unpacking this glory what is that grace and what is the glory for what is the grace for we know we explain it's explaining amplifier version the blessings of god this is why as believer we really like the message of grace and some people even use it as in the grace is over me you've just seen my friend you need to repent no the grace is over me that's completely wrong that's not what the grace of the scripture is all about we like the grace the blessing of god it says it's in part the blessing and the favor of God. But then the second part of 1 Peter 5 10, he says, The God of all grace who has called you to his own eternal glory. So I uh, will look at the fact that there's different types of glory. But some question I have for you for your own Bible study What is the grace of God for? So throughout the year, we, we have asked God to grant us his grace, the favor of God. Is different type of protection, different type of uh, spiritual enablement. He has enabled us to do certain things by his grace. That's why we've asked the grace of God. It's a special, special uh, um, uh, ability given to you, special favor given to you by God, by divine happening. This is why we ask the grace of God, by your grace, give me strength to do this. I'm feeling tired. I'm feeling weak. Give me energy to do it. Give me ability to do this. So some people even, before going to their workplace, I say, I can't get alone with my boss. Give me grace to even face my work, to go to my workplace. There's all sorts of grace we ask for. But what is the glory of God for? The glory of God. It is given for something as well. So in the upcoming year, let's begin to pray, not only for God's provision of his grace to be upon our lives, our loved ones, our family, our neighborhood, but let's begin to also pray that he will enable us to walk under his divine glory. In fact, pray that your life and mine will be covered by the cloud of the glory of God. So while everything else that is nonsense, things we don't understand things which is part of the darkness we read about in Isaiah 60 when the darkness is over the world everything that happening that we don't get we it's tragic well let's begin to pray that the cloud of glory cover us so it shields us from that as we read for the Lord God is a sun and shield we want the glory of God to be our divine protection in the Old Testament, the children of Israel, you know, in the, the, the glory of God manifested when they left Egypt. It manifested through a cloud, you know, a cloud by day and a fire by night. It was the manifested presence of God. You ask the question, what is the glory? The glory can be the presence of God. The presence of God himself manifested over his children. So we're, we're going to look at the scripture to understand in First John, the glory of God can be the presence of God and it can be Jesus himself. In the New Testament, we were introduced by Jesus as the glory of God himself. Look at John 1, John 1, 14. I'll, I'll read from the English Standard Version. John chapter 1, verse 14. The, 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 the writer was John introduced Jesus, the Son of God, as the glory of God. It says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of, repeat that word, grace and truth. So you have not only the grace of God, but you have the Son of God introduced us. He come with grace and truth. Is the glory which brings grace and truth. Praise God. So we continue to read verse 15 of John 1, verse 15. It says, 
John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he whom I said, He who has come after me ranks before me because he was before me. And verse 16, let read a bit further. For his fullness, from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. You're starting to get it now? Grace, there's not just grace. The grace upon grace in this verse is, it, is introduced that first you have the Son of God, who's the glory of God himself, Jesus, who's come, the word became flesh. The glory of God came, came to live among us, and that glory brought grace and truth, because there's always truth in the word of God. We say the word of God, Jesus is the word. It can be all like, woo, but it's just, it's, it's amazing. There's a mystery happening in there, but you will understand as we're studying this slowly, you understand there's different type of glory. Some people will say, oh, look at the glory upon that God, just because they're famous. Oh, look at that's glorious. I have no idea what kind of glory you're talking about. We will that glory that came with the son of god that came grace upon grace he says from his fullness verse 15 we have all received grace upon grace again it's a confirmation when we stop there that it's very ignorant when we think give me grace lord just grace what grace do you need my friend even those online what grace do you need learn to be specific Lord, I need grace to overcome. There's too many challenges on my path. Aha, angel, grace to overcome. Oh Lord, I need grace to succeed in my studies. I need grace to be exceptional in this venture I'm doing. Aha, it's the grace for uh, the spirit of excellence, like the spirit which was upon Daniel. Look at the book of Daniel. Aha, you made a specific grace upon grace there's layer and layer and layer and in the year when we went through those series we just scratch scratch the surface and now god is calling us onto the glory path which i'm still feeling like i don't even know if i'm ready for it ready or not here i come like that game you know ready or not there will be darkness ready or not something will be happening you better be ready you and your family you better be ready to be if you believe in the lord jesus christ you have access to that glory you better be ready to put yourself under the glory realm because otherwise you're exposed my friend verse 16 from his fullness we're still in john 1 14. we have all received grace upon grace 17. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. No one has ever seen God, the, the only, no one has ever seen God, excuse me, the only God who is at the Father's side. He, Father's side, he has made him known, the glory of God. Wow. Now let's have a look now. I'm speeding through now through the scripture the glory presents itself in di at different levels so in the short time that's left for me to preach this morning i want to take you through different type quickly through different type of glory that i'm learning and then i'll tell you how this coming year and this is my prayer and i hope you get also on the same boat where you begin to ask god bring me to that glory realm Help me to get there, to begin to walk my life. It becomes natural, normal for me to walk under the glory realm. So different layers of glory there is. Like I said, some people use the word glory. You find glory in the scripture in many ways. You find even say, give glory to God. The Pharisees say to the person who's been healed and they're questioning that person that Jesus healed. They say, hey, give glory to God. In that phrase, it was translated, glory to God, it means testify the truth. See, the God we just read in John, the, the, the glory of God comes with grace and truth. So when they say, give glory to God, as were you really blind? As, as this man has really brought you back to your eyesight, and you know that passage in the scripture, give glory to God, it means testify, say, say the truth. And you'll find other places, he says, give 
your glory due to God in Chronicle. I believe the second Chronicle said, give the glory due to God. So what glory are you giving? It's like whatever belongs to God, give him back his praise. He's given you something, give back, return what belongs to him, return his, his praise. We we'll look into that. But now, let's stay on the surface where we can understand the glory realm. Number one. The first type of glory that we want to understand, the entry level. Before we can even get to that glory realm, the entry level is salvation. Most of you in the building today will be like, ah, I'm okay, I'm saved. But what about if someone is here or someone's watching and you're like, I'm not sure, I haven't actually made my commitment fully to Jesus. I want to tell you that the entry base of the glory realm, the level, there's different level, the entry one is salvation. And if you read in First Colossians 1, Colossians 1, 27, it says, to them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles, that's the Gentile us, anyone who's not Jewish, a little Gentile out there, Gentile, Gentile in the room, I see them everywhere, I'm sure you're Gentile, so, well, if you're Jewish watching us, we love you, but all the Gentile, most Gentile is us, so he says, to them God has chosen to make, for Colossians chapter 1 verse 27, to them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery. It's a mystery, friend. It says, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So Christ has got to be in you, first of all. You have to have a little piece of that glory that came from heaven in the flesh. He became flesh. The Word became flesh. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that we've just read about, whom we've just read about in John. You have to have a little piece of that glory that came in the flesh. Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory. So first of all, if you do not know the Lord Jesus, you have not confessed Him as your own Savior and King. You have to start right there. You can't even move further. The glory realm, you start with the Jesus being the hope of glory. You say yes to Jesus. I repent of my sin. Just say, I repent of my sin, Lord Jesus. Come into my life. Be my Lord, my Savior, my King. I believe you died on the cross. And I believe three days after you rose from the dead, I accept you as my King. Come, be my God. Make your throne into my heart. Amen. Just like that, tell somebody, I become a Christian. I'm a follower of God. The glory of God is in you now. A piece of that glory. Christ in you. The hope of glory. So from there now, talking of the hope of glory. How many have ever heard the term saying, so and so died? Really, really sorry to hear. So and so died. But thank God they have been promoted to glory. How many have heard that phrase? They have been promoted to glory. And it's usually those who died in the Lord. Those who died believing in God. They have been promoted to glory. Meaning they're going to heaven. Some people who call that glory. They call, they call it heaven. They call it paradise. You know, they call it in the bosom of Abraham. It's in the scripture. They call it in the bosom, in the, in the arms. I mean, you know, she's in the arms of the Lord now. She's resting in the arms of the Lord. So we put a smile on because our loved one died in the Lord since they have been promoted to glory. So there's a glory on earth. There's a glory that comes into your heart when you believe in Jesus. There's a glory awaiting for you when you go over in eternity and you believe in Jesus. Promotion from this glory to that glory. Let's keep an eye on my time. Time is not on my side, honestly. The glory. This is why, you know, we say Jesus, um, we say those who have been promoted to glory, it's because they said yes to Jesus, first of all. And, and that's why it's important, entry level. First John 5, 11. In other words, that glory in the scripture, everywhere you find it says eternal glory, eternal glory, eternal glory. That's the promotion glory that we're on about. 
the, the glory are waiting for us on the other side. It's another uh, poetic way of saying on the other side. They cross over to the other side. Yes, in First John 5, 11, it says, it says First John 5, 11, I'm going to go speedily, but I will put it in the description box box of our youtube the scripture so if you miss it don't worry i'll just go very speedily because of time first john 5 11 and this is the testimony god has given us eternal life and this life is in his son eternal life at the place it says eternal glory so god has given it in his son the glory awaiting for us and you remember the first Peter 5.10 that we read again uh, in our series earlier on of the Grace series. And even today we read it in the Amplified, the New Living Translation. First Peter 5, he said, And the God of all grace who calls you to is eternal glory. So there's level of glory, level of glory. And he's pulling us. You said yes to Jesus, one step of glory one step in you said yes to jesus and then you begin to mature in the things of god the glories of god come we haven't got time but you look in the scripture you see how it says um in fact let's just quickly go to second chronicle in the old testament i pick one example in the old testament and we go in the new testament it's always help so second chronicle chapter seven Verse 1 to 7, you have the dedication of the temple. Solomon is king. He's dedicating the temple to the Lord. You read the passage, absolutely beautiful. What happened? He dedicated the temple to the Lord, the physical temple. What happened? He says the glory of God fell. The glory of God on the temple. Let's read a few verses. Just um, so Second Chronicles 7, 1 to 7, it says, When Solomon finished praying, the uh, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Wow, it filled the temple so much so that when you continue to read, it says that the glory was so thick, the priests were, were not able to get in. Because the glory of God, which is representation of the presence of God, it was so thick on the temple, in the temple, that they could not even go in the temple. It continues that. You just go ahead at home, read it um, from verse 1 to 7, even further. You could, you could find that when the glory came, at some point, God appeared to Solomon and said, what do you want? The glory of God. The presence of God, it came and Solomon was able to interact with the maker of heaven and earth. It's amazing. You will find also in the Old Testament where the children uh, of Israel, you find even just Moses himself. There's a big, big difference. You look at Moses, you will see when he was a baby in Egypt, when we're talking about grace and glory in Egypt, Moses was just a baby. I'll give you a few scripture to, to remind you of how when he was in Egypt, there was evidence of the grace of God upon him. As a baby, he had the grace for divine protection. They could not kill him. He was protected. And you'll find it. Check out Exodus chapter 2. Read the story of how he was protected as a baby. The grace for divine protection was on him. And then all the way when he, he, um, he, he, he runs away after he kills an Egyptian as, a, as an adult, he runs in the wilderness, he meets up the glory of God as a form in the form of a bush that doesn't die out. And, they, and that, in, in Exodus chapter 3, he kind of encounters a glory of another level. And then when he goes back, he received the call of God. There's a glory level that is when you receive that glory and you're walking under that, you begin to walk according to what God called you to do. The glory realm. I want to be walking in 2024, making sure that I'm living under the realm that God has called me to walk this path. 
I want to invite you as well to begin to ask him, Lord, not just grace, not just grace upon my life. I want to also have that little promotion, become to come closer to you. I want to learn to have, to enter the uh, different levels of glory to the point where I begin to fulfill what you call me to do. Look at the life of uh, uh, Moses when he became a deliverer. It wasn't just grace on him now. It was the glory of God on him. And you'll find passages in the scripture where it says actually the people will see his face lit because the glory of God was so thick on his life. Wow, where do I go from it? In the New Testament, shall I go in the New Testament? In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul talks about the temple. So the Old Testament, Solomon made a temple, physical temple, and he asked the glory of God to come in the temple, and he came, God. In the New Testament, we have in 1 Corinthians 3, 19, it says, Don't you know that you yourself are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? So we want to come into the year believing God that, Lord, you will help me. I, I want to pray and cry out to God to say that not just my, my, my life to become that physical temple where actually your glory dwells. So I'm now, can you see now it's becoming a little bit like mysterious. We're talking about different type of grace. We're talking about the glory that covers you. We're talking about the glory that dwells in you. We're talking about the glory that is so thick that the tangible presence of God comes where he begins to interact with you. Oh, may we get to that level. May we get to that place where it's not just his glory protecting us or like the children of Israel. There's a cloud over there. God is with us just at a little short distance. He's right there, but he's actually in us. He's actually on us. Wow, because we are the temple. The one thing that will separate us from God to be manifested in his glory. Because even if you say yes to Jesus, what's stopping God's glory to be to be growing to the point where it becomes thick, like we're reading in the story, is sin. So that that's why in the year that is coming, we're going to learn a new uh, series that we look at uh, upcoming. We, we're going to learn how we're going to get closer to that glory. I need to bring the message to a close because time is not on our side, like I said. But pray as this upcoming year, is the, the year 2024 is coming. Pray that, Lord, teach me how to walk under the glory realm. Teach me how to walk in holiness so that the glory in me will grow and become thick and I become to interact with you. There's a very level, I apologize for speeding up because I say it's fresh word, it's just come and I need to sit down maybe and compartmentalize it. I think I need to do that. But right now, let's end quickly on Matthew 5, where I want to give you an example that you can go so and read because we gave an example from the Old Testament. I like to also look at the New Testament. Many people find it very relevant to their own life. If they can find something that is applicable to their own life in the New Testament. Look at the demon possessed man. In the New Testament in Mark chapter 5. You will find that story also in Matthew 8. So we look at Mark 5. And I'm just going to paraphrase Mark 5. Read 1 to 25. There's a demon possessed guy. He's got legal inside of him. The Bible said Jesus crossed over and he went with the intention when he got there. This man was full of demon. He's been so demonized that he could not even live normally. That The other passage say he will, he will strip naked and he live in tombs. He will, he will cut, take stones and cut himself. You know, all those demonic uh, demons were oppressing him. But the beautiful things that happens there, when you go towards the end, that Jesus rebuked the uh, evil, the demon. He, he, he um, rebuked them out of the, the man, the foul spirit. He rebuked them out. The man is set free. Grace comes over that man. He received the grace of God. But when you read further, you will see what it's like for that man continue and begin to walk under the glory realm. In what way I'll let, read verse 19 quickly of Mark 5. He said, Jesus did not let him, uh, verse 18 says, as Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon possessed begged to go with him. Verse 19 says, Jesus did not let him, but said, 
Go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So verse 20 says, so the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus has done for him. And all the people were amazed. And other versions say that would tell, he began to proclaim, he began to declare. So when you study that part, so he received the grace, he was delivered, the grace to be free from any demonic oppression that was keeping him bound over the years. But while he began to walk under the glory realm where Jesus gave him the empowerment, he became to walk under his calling, became an evangelist. And so I'm going to stop there. And by the grace of God, I will continue to study as I believe is the word grace and glory. God is calling us in 2024. Would you walk under grace and glory? Would you be willing to uh, ask the Lord to bring you closer? Would you be willing to ask him to cover you with the glory so that every darkness taking on around you will not get in you or on you in the name of Jesus? I just leave that challenge with you. As for me and my house, like I say, we'll serve the Lord. So as for me and my house, we will be asking, Lord, bring us to the glory realm. Help us to grow for the glory that is in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christ is already in us. There's already, already a size piece of glory inside of us. Lord, help it to grow. Father, thank you. I thank you for your word. Lord, I pray that ye had made sense. It can sound a little bit strange, but the word of God is a mystery. And it's hard to understand mystery. I just pray you continue to open up this revelation. It's so fresh that I feel like I've, I've not quite understood it myself properly. But I pray, Lord, that you will bring the church to this different type of, of glory, Lord. We have lived with the basic glory for so long. Father, I pray that the year that is about to come upon us, Lord, will not be a year like every other year. I pray, Lord, that you will teach us to walk under the glory realm, Father. In multiple layers, just like you taught us with grace, there's different layers. Teach us as well about glory. There's this different type of glory, Lord. Help us to not only be promoted to glory as in dying, but begin to expect the glory of God in us. Christ in us, the hope of glory, to begin to grow, Father, so that we can reach a level like Solomon, we begin to interact with you, Father. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus, for the lawlessness that will multiply as I heard it, I pray for your divine protection through the glory cloud over your children, Lord. Teach us, Lord, again. Mm -hmm. We don't know how, teach us how to run under that cloud, Lord. Teach us, we pray, in the name of Jesus, Spirit of the living God, seal this word into our heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen and amen. And God bless you.